While you're standing, get your Bible and turn with me to the book of John, chapter 4. And I just want to select one verse, though I'm going to preach a lot more verses, but I've been talking about the church, back to church, talking about why we need the church, talking about being the caring church. We last spoke last week about how to find the right church. And we looked at this woman, a Samaritan woman at the well, and we saw that she had chains on her life. She was rejected by her community and would go to the well of water in the midst of the day and had an encounter with Jesus. Do you remember yours? Where were you when you had your encounter with Jesus? Jesus changes her life. And then he begins to speak to his disciples who came and asked him, Master, do you need any sustenance? And he said, my sustenance is to do the will of my Father that sent me. And he told them about the harvest. God has always had a harvest of souls on his mind. Our great commission is about going and compelling the lost so we can help them to come to the one that can break every chain. Amen. I thank God that somebody came to me and, and began to share the word of life with me. In verse number 35 in chapter 4, it reads, Do not say there are still four months, and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for the harvest. Hold it right there. And I want to pull from here where he says, lift up your eyes. I, I want to say, stay woke. Where he says, lift up your eyes, I want you to open up your eyes. Stay woke. Because many of us don't see what the enemy is doing. And many should be free, but we're still bound. And we don't even know it. I want to talk about spiritually blind. Stay woke. You may be seated. You can change that backdrop. Stay woke. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. New beginning, um, we were took all the leaders to a retreat last weekend. And I want to tell you, we came back better. Come on, give the Lord a hand, praise. More unified, more focused, more together. We went through some stuff, and we expected that because we were trying to get closer. A lot of times, when you're going through, uh, you think that God is trying to destroy you, but God isn't trying to destroy you. He's trying to get you to see you. He's trying to get you to see who you are. Not who you feign to be, but uh, who you really are. And we find that in the crucibles of life, when things get hard, we find out who we are. We find out who we are. And, and, and it was a good thing. We say it was a good thing that we were afflicted because sometimes we're in the house where we're supposed to be spiritual giants, but we're spiritual midgets sometimes because we're blind to what's really going on. In fact, we recognize that many are dealing with the issues you see here because the church is supposed to be a spiritual hospital for those who are hurting, for those who are angry, for those who are addicted, to those who have been cast out and rejected. And But many times they come from the community to the church and we do the same thing to them because we are blind and it's the blind leading I chose to choose a topic, stay woke. I know the baby boomers, you you know that's bad English. And that doesn't feel too good to you. But woke means 
being conscious in our modern day culture of discrimination or oppression or injustice. It's something the young folks say that you're not woke because you're still buying into an old traditional mindset that told you that you were less than because of your ethnicity or your, your, your gender and you got to wake up and understand that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You got to wake up out of the old way, walk in the new way and you've got to wake up. Nudge your neighbor and tell him wake up. Wake up spiritually. Spiritually, we need to wake up. Wake up. And then when you start looking at staying woke, woke is the past tense of wake. Uh, someone who has gone through uh, a, a process of walking and waking up and then walking in a new disposition. You know how it is when you wake up initially, you're groggy, right? You still can't quite tell what's going on around you. You just kind of... Some folks wake up real quickly and others not so much. But that is the case in the spirit as well. Some of us who've been in church a long time, we think we're awake, but we're asleep at the wheel. How do I know? It's because we still can't discern the signs of the time. We can't even look at a young man or a young woman and discern which, which one of these chains is he or she dealing with without it messing with us. Sometimes we can see it, but we're not mature enough to handle it because we're still blind. I can't see that you're walking in depression or you're walking in anger or you're walking in unforgiveness because your anger triggers mine. And I'm supposed to be the teacher. So what God does, he meets this woman at the well, but he's really trying to show her Herself, We need to be woke in the spirit. We must evolve in the spirit. We must understand what's going on in the spirit and in the lives of the people around you. In the lives of the people around you. Because I need you. And, and whether you know it or not, you need me. We were talking about the church. Why do we need the church? Because God chose the church to save the world. God chose the church to tell people who were in bondage, come, let me show you a man that told me everything about who I was and still accepted me right where I was. Sometimes we can't help people because we reject them because of where they are. And we think that we are awake and they are asleep, but you are asleep because your spirit is still dead to the spirit of God that would tell you to identify deep calls unto deep, spirit to spirit. You don't judge a man by what he looked like. You've got to judge the spirit by the spirit. You've got to, you've got to, there's got to be a connection. We need to be woke in the spirit. We need to evolve. We need to mature in the spirit. And we recognize that it's not easy because the God of this world has blinded us. He has blinded us to the pain that people are going through. It's a shame that we, the church, are the ones that should be lifting people up in their situation. But we end up tearing. And then we say we woke. No, no. No, we're still blind because we're still, we're still letting our flesh dictate whether or not we give them a chance, letting our flesh dictate whether we're going to go off. You know, you say, girl, I'm about to go off. You know you're going to go off. You're going to push your own butt. You plan to go off. You've been talking about going off all day. Let, let, let her say we're all can be naturally blind to what's going on in our society because we're spiritually blind to what's going on in the spirit. We are easily deceived. Spiritual blindness is when a person is unable to see God or to understand even the message from God. Even though some of you all will hear and heed and receive what I'm going to say, I dare say that half of you will not. And, and some may say, well, 
it, it, I can't receive from him. It, I, it, maybe the word was not uh, exegetical, or maybe it was too topical, or uh, textual, or whatever, whatever way you choose to reject it. And that could be true, but it could be that you simply are blind. To be spiritually blind is to be spiritually undiscerning, undiscerning of what is going on in the spirit. And God uh, called me today as we wrap up talking about going back to church. Uh, many people think that they're rejecting the church, but you're really rejecting Christ because this is his bride. And, and one of the things that we found out when I talked last week about how to, to how to find the right church for you, many of us are looking to the church and you're looking to programs and you're looking to people and it's not in the programs of the people, it's in the spirit of God. Many of us are looking, they're looking for somebody you, you, to, to, to sing you happy and if they don't have a good praise team, you think that you can, you can choose not to go but can I let you in on a little something, something? I need you to know that your fellowship has a direct impact on your faith because you are not just called to be uh, uh, gathered but you're called to be assembled can I let you in on something else you don't choose your church God chooses your church you have to make a choice whether to accept it or not why because he's not about gatherings he's about assembly so God adds to the body as he deems necessary he sent you and his spirit leads you and guides you but how can you be led and by guided by a spirit that you can't see you can't hear you don't understand the woman came to the well and she was looking for something that would satisfy her she had, she had married herself to five men, and the man she was with now still did. Some of us are married to things that we thought would satisfy us, but the only thing that satisfies is Jesus. And that's why we will go through this. Anybody, been, don't, 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 don't say, don't amen this. Anybody been going through some of the same old cycles? trying to find the same, trying to find happiness in, in the same place, in the same situation, in the same circumstance, getting the same result. We have to open our eyes. This woman comes to the well, and uh, Jesus tells her all things about herself. one of the things we recognize is he wants me to see me. He wants me to, he wants to reveal to me who I am so I can see it. And it wasn't until she said to Jesus in a conversation, she said, I know the Messiah is coming and he will teach us everything. Then Jesus said, I am he. Some of us know but knowing is not enough. Some of us know the word, but we don't have any relationship with the word. Because if you have relationship with the word, you have relationship with God. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Many times we don't have the right relationship even with the word. And when I talk about the word, it's not just the logos word. It's the rhema word. It's not just the written word. It's the spirit-infused word that causes us to take off scales from our eyes and begin to see in the spirit realm. Begin to see in the spirit realm. So we have to understand this woman, she knew. She had been raised in the doctrine. She knew but she yet did not know. And sometimes I said earlier that it felt like this felt a little religious because we can take the traditions of man and make the word of God of non effect. So it's a tradition to come on Sunday, but God is looking for true worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. 
God is trying to say something to us. It's not enough for you together. You've got to become intimate with the spirit of the living God because that same spirit that will speak to you, God is trying to give us a spirit-filled life. And, and what we want, we want to come and feel the Spirit because somebody hit the right key, because somebody sang the right song, and we're missing what God wants us to have an intimacy with because when you get down to your valley experience, God wants to be able to whisper to you while the world is raging so you can calm yourself in the midst of the storm because you know the one that can speak to the storm. brings this woman to herself causing her to see that this thing that is standing before you is the word of God, is the spirit of God and he offers her the water, the water being the Holy Spirit he offers her that that is going to just bubble living water, back in that day they would have ceremonies and they would draw the water out but once the water was drawn out it was no longer considered living water. It was dead. If moving water was living water. But he says, I want to give you living water that just not is not just confined to one area, but it bubbles over and touches everything. Why? Because it's spirit. It is spirit. It is through that spirit that he will lead us and guide us and comfort us and teach us and encourage us. What God wants us to do is to become awakened to his spirit that he can remove the scales of what you see in the natural. He says God is a spirit being and he is trying to have a relationship with our spirit being. In every one of us, there is a desire, there is a spirit of God living on the inside. God is trying to tap into what he already put in you. So when it connects, now you got power. Now you got understanding. He says, I'm looking for those who will worship me in spirit and in truth. He is also the truth. He says that you shall know the truth and that that truth the word will make you free why because many have begun to err away from the truth of God in this modern 21st century we start saying you have your own relative truth it's truth to you we don't care what the Bible say but the thing about the Bible God says I want to give you my spirit so spirit can pull on spirit and then I give you my word with this is truth many of us cannot discern because we don't know what to divide against we don't we got the world and we got the word if you don't know the word you end up going with the world but when we understand the word the truth, now we can divide, we can discern, we can say no, because the Bible says no, I can't do that. That grieves the spirit of God. Even if I don't know the word, I know the spirit, and the spirit will convict me even though I don't know. The See, what God is trying to do, people of God, God really wants a relationship with us. He wants his spirit to bear witness with you. You are a spirit being having a physical experience. You're not a natural or physical being having a spiritual experience, and that's what it feels like sometimes when you come in. You waiting on somebody over here to connect to something that's dead in you. So if the choir... If you find that the choir is your thing, and I understand that because when I first got saved, if you didn't have a thumping, I mean, get down, Willie Brown kind of choir where you could throw your head back and the pastor could run around the church while the choir, choir held one note. <laughs> Hold it. And see the pastor jump over about three chairs. Ah, That's what kind of church I was looking for. 
I wanted, I wanted, I, I remember going to church in Santa Ana, California. Pastor had on a white suit, long Jerry curl with a red pocket hanky. I remember red and white shoes. This boy was bad. Easter Sunday. Jerry curl juice just fly. I'm about the third or fourth row talking about, yeah, this is good. But after a while, you got to know the Lord for yourself. And, and all of that, that's cool, man, but what are you talking about? I ain't heard one scripture. I ain't heard not one word I can understand. God, God, yeah, yeah. I ain't mad at him. I just didn't know what he was saying. I need to know. Jesus offered her living water, Holy Spirit to dwell in her. He's offering us a spirit-filled life. Spirit-filled life. Whatever you're filled with, it will begin to direct you and guide you. So if all you consume is mess, mess, He's looking for us. How do you find the right church? You find the right God, and he'll lead you to the right church. It's your prerogative to follow the word of God or not. He'll get used to me after a while. He, Grace did to him. You'll, 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 you'll be like, oh, God. God wants us to understand. It's a spirit-filled life, y'all. That's how I know I'm in the right church. It doesn't matter what goes, what doesn't go. Man, I know Jesus. I know that 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 I know. Doesn't matter what my friends say. Don't matter what the pastor say. The pastor doesn't even have to be living anything. But if God called me, he's the only one that can tell me when to go. And it doesn't matter how much I like the pastor and the first lady. If he didn't call me, God has to be the one that speaks to your spirit. Many of us are not at the place where we can hear him. Or we hear him, but we won't heed him. We hear him, but we... Even those of us that have become awake in our spirit is our prerogative. I can do what I want to do. Nudge your neighbor and tell him it's my prerogative. Wake him up. I can do what I want to do. My prerogative. Yeah. It's your, it, it, it doesn't matter. Do you know it doesn't matter what the Holy Spirit says? You get to choose what you're going to do. And that's when we find out that, man, if you're blind to, spiritually blind to what the Spirit of God is saying, then you're left to your own devices. Now you're looking at stuff that don't matter. You'll go to wherever it seemed to be jumping off. Oh, New Beginning got it going on. Hallelujah. Let's go, you kids. Come on, come on, come on. Uh-oh. Elder Ford up there talking about offering again, tithe again. Get your stuff. Let's go. I can't believe, I cannot believe the pastor let his own son come in there and preach. His you know, his daughter went down and did the retreat. That ain't nothing but nepotism. I know when the Lord is moving. I didn't feel nothing. But your flesh. God is a spirit, and he's looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth, and the truth part is the word. Do you know that God will never do anything to transgress his word? He will never, he will never, and this is how you know it's God or not. Sometimes your spirit will get all messed up. Don't act like you know exactly when the spirit is talking, because I sure don't. I hear a lot of voices. I hear... You do too. 
Y'all all looking all holy. You know you be hearing voices. You be hearing voices. How many will say, yeah, I be hearing voices? I'm going to try this again. I said, over here, over here. How many of y'all will say, I hear voices? You know, I'm going to talk about some of y'all. Thank y'all. We all do. That's that debate that's going on on the inside. You, 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 you're waging a war. You're trying to tell your flesh, do not hit her. Do not say what you're thinking. You ever been in a place you're so mad you you thought it and then you thought you said it, but you hadn't said it yet? You think, God, thank you, I didn't say it. Anybody ever been glad I didn't say what I was thinking? You were hearing voices. Don't play with me. Harkin, don't you hear voices? Lots of them. Me too, Harkin. You can almost call me Sybil. I got something going on up here. Yes. We're in a spiritual warfare. And it's not just happening out there. It's happening in here. The battle is for my mind. The battle is for my spirit. The battle is do I hear and heed the voice of God? something about this word. He says, I want you to worship me in spirit and in truth. You've got to have both. And too many of us, we are depending on the spirit, but we don't really know if it's the spirit because we don't know enough about the word. Well, that feels right. That should tell you you're wrong already. Because most of the time when God deals with me, he goes directly against what I feel. I don't have a problem being obedient when he tells me to do what I feel. It's when he tells me to love you and I know you've been talking about me. He tells me to forgive you and I know you don't like me and you keep doing the same thing. And I'm counting. It's been 21 times. God, how many more? He wants to make us spirit-filled believers. Man, listen, it doesn't matter. I don't know how long you're supposed to be here, but this is your preparation for what God has purposed for you. And the question is, will you stand on the word of God or do what you feel? Anybody ever been in a place he called you right to your thing? You know your thing. Your thing. Sometimes you'll you'll hear something that sounds good. And that's why he said, beware. At least anyone cheats you through philosophy and empty deceit. And according to the traditions of men, if we've always done it this way, that's when you practically know that this ain't God. God is a revolutionary. God, the fact that he was talking to this woman at the well, don't you know that the rabbis wouldn't even talk to their own wives or daughters in public about the word? To even be seen at the well with her. And see, this is the thing. Sometimes you don't know who to witness to because you're too concerned about what people think about you. But if you're led by the Spirit, if God tells you to go to a a, a person that is completely opposite of you, see, what makes me comfortable in doing it is because he is my comfort. Not what, not what community says, not what the people say, because the people will say, Hosanna today. This woman, she recognized that she, she had that encounter with Jesus. Look with me at John 4 and 28. God is always working around us. God is trying to pursue us. God wants us to understand spirit calls to spirit. Once she has an encounter with God, it changes everything. The woman then left her water pots, went her way into the city, and said to the men, look at verse 29, she says to the men, she goes where she's comfortable, 
come and see a man who told me all things. Watch this. Underline, come see. She didn't say, come and hear. She says, come see. Why? Because she had saw. You can only give people what you have seen. Your, it, your knowledge, knowing the word and being an understanding of it is two different things. She says, now that she saw, she could go tell people, come see. Now watch this. Whenever you have an encounter with God, sometimes you'll, you, you, you'll have to know that God changes everything through that encounter. The people you used to be ashamed to go and witness to, now that you can see what God is saying, it takes away your inhibitions. It takes away your low self-esteem. It takes away the old path. It takes away the old way of doing things now that you have seen. And you know what? She simply goes and shares with others what she has seen. Somewhere they call that a testimony. Isn't it something? Isn't it something when you can talk to somebody and you know that they know the God you're talking about? Mr. Willie, when you talk about him as a healer, I can see in your eye that you know he's a... When you, when you begin to talk about him, Harkeem, as a redeemer, I know that you was in Islam for years. You said, no, man, one day I met Jesus. told me his testimony he said you know Islam was talking to him about being a man and and being and standing up when when especially black men was falling down and he said it it met a need at some point but then it got to a place that everything was just empty because he didn't know him in his spirit God wants to make us spirit filled believers he wants to speak to you while I'm speaking. He wants to speak to you about you. He wants you to have an encounter with who you are. He wants to, you to see your flaws. He wants you to see you to see your setbacks. But he don't want you to stay there. He he didn't come to condemn you. He come to convict you and to encourage you. But you can't know where to go when you don't know where you're at. Um, let me show you a man. I love this because Jesus saw everything she was and still said, I see something in you. Isn't that all right? He saw everything that she was. You got to realize that God has called us to see ourselves differently. He wants us to see ourselves, but then as our encounter with him, he says, I want to begin to see myself differently. And that perspective will shift everything. It shifts your situation. It shifts your self-esteem. It shifts your expectations. It shifts your determination. It shifts the celebration. It, it shifts everything. The only reason that I could preach to you is because I had an encounter with God that causes me to look beyond my deficiency, that causes me to look beyond where I come from, that causes me to look beyond my inhibitions, that causes me to look beyond my limitations. You may see everything that I'm not, but God sees everything I am. He still accepts me. He know that I'm a work in progress. He tells this woman, after she has this encounter, after she's awake, after she's, she had, many of us have had that encounter with Jesus, and you don't went to sleep, man. You, you, you set up in the church and gone back to sleep. I can talk to you about your testimony, you don't even remember or the one you're still giving today is the one you had 20 years ago. Come on, man. God ain't done nothing in your life since 1972. 
you had nothing, no, no, no leading, no pick me up, rebuke, nothing. You ain't had nothing. You ain't had no dreams. You ain't had no near accidents that you know it was God. He didn't give you a job that you didn't even put in the application. The job came for you. You not nothing. You know what happens is we go to sleep and we think it's us. That's why you don't give him glory. You thought, man, I'm hard working and everything else. You don't give him glory because you think you did it. Nudge your neighbor and tell him, stay woke. Come on, nudge your get, 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 High five three people and tell them, you better stay woke. Stay woke. I say high five three people. I'm watching you. I'm counting them. I don't see y'all doing nothing over here. I'm counting. Who, who, who'd you? All right, then. Stay woke. Stay woke. Don't go back to sleep. And what happens is you come forever hearing but never coming into the knowledge of the truth. You go to sleep. Here's how you know. When was the last time you prayed against the insurmountable? When was the last time you believed beyond belief? When was the last time you called those things that be not? When was the last time you made a demand on your faith? When was the last time you woke up in the middle of the night because you heard the sweet whisper of the Holy Spirit and you got on your face and God began to speak to you about the thing that you couldn't sleep about? Stay woke. God is at work. See, Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. He met her at Sychar. He met her at the place of falsehood and drunkenness and debauchery and alcohol and sexual promiscuity. Fill in the blank. He came to seek and save. He says, I, I'm not waiting for you to come to me. I'm coming after you. I need you to know that the Holy Spirit is always at work. He is always working. He's always speaking. Even now, he's speaking. He's causing you to go over things in your own mind. He's the one. Don't, 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 don't get mad at me. Pastor Cameron, I don't go there no more because, you know, he just hard. You obviously don't know me. Holy Spirit is giving it to you like you need to hear it. Because some of us, y'all know we don't want nothing. And listen, if you want me, to, you better talk. You better come on here. If you were too passive, I'm telling you, I'm going to bring me a pillow next time I come to church because I know where I'm going. He comes to her right where she is. And he says, too many of us have been trapped by the things that we're thirsty for. Don't get trapped by your thirst. Don't get trapped by your thirst. It'll, 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 y'all know I'm telling you, it'll suck you right in. It'll take everything you've worked to build up, but that same old thing that you haven't dealt with in your character, it will begin to pull you down little by little. It's just a matter of time because we can get trapped by the things we thirst for. But if you start to begin to fill yourself in the word, when you begin to fill yourself with the word, it will begin to demand what it's filled with. You can't talk to a man that's drunk. You begin to talk to the alcohol. He can't even hear you. Some of us are under the influence of the adversary. It's hard to talk to you because you're filled with something. You know, come on, come on. I was watching um, a, a show the other day. Um, it, I think it's about these three families, millionaires in Alabama somewhere, flipping houses. I mean, I watched, I watched all the shows that they had on there. I had one of them Saturdays. And by the time I finished, I just felt agitated. I felt agitated. It was entertaining, but it was agitating. 
It was, it, it, and and, and, and I, I thought, man, who lives like this? But what I saw there was a man that had millions of dollars but no integrity. And he went after a moment and lost everything he had worked on for a lifetime. Jesus meets her where she was so he could show her to herself. We have to avoid the thirst trap. I know we like what we like, but what we like may not be what God wants for us. We have to be able to hear him. He says those who are hungry and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. See, because God must work in you before he can work through you. See, he, there are people that he's already ordained preset you to reach but he got to work through you before in you before he can work through you God wants us to be able to uh, wait to see the issues in our lives so then we can better see them in other lives see you can't see things you can't identify with you can't even see it I know some people here doing whatever fill in the blank there, I can't see everything. There's some things that spirit will tell me. He will, he will tell me. And, I mean, I, I, I will shake your hand, and he will download to me. And I'm like, hmm, don't even want to know. But I've come to find out that he gives it to me because he can trust me with it. And, and it doesn't change how I interact with you. Because I recognize that it had not been for the Lord, then it could be me. And he allows me to see it so I can begin to, in his timing, when he tells me to, I can speak to you about it. And that's the same thing he's doing with all of us. He wants spirit-filled believers. And, he, and, and many times, because of our encounter, we try to limit how God is going to move. Look at verse number um, um, 35 through 37. In, in John chapter 4. He, he has just said to his disciples, they asked him, did he have any nourishment? And he says, no, my, my nourishment is to do the work of God that sent me. And then he says, do not say to yourself, because he sees something happening in the spirit. He said, do not say that there are still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white for the harvest. What Jesus saw in the spirit, go to verse 26, 36. What Jesus saw in the spirit was the woman had already went to the people in the village and they had received her word and they're on their way to see Jesus. And he who reaps, he says, I need you to know when I tell you to move, don't consider the circumstances. Don't consider that they don't like you. Thank you, Tim. Don't consider that you got a bad name. Don't consider that you've done this over and over and over and over again. You want to consider the fact that normally you plant a seed in about four months, it will bring forth the harvest. He says, no, I do new math. One plus one don't equal two. It equals 200 with me. He says, one plants, another waters. I'll give the increase. He that plants is nothing. He that waters is nothing. I am the one making the difference. Watch this. So when I tell you to move, when I tell you to go witness to somebody, when I tell you to share your testimony, don't you consider yourself and don't you consider them. I want you to be spirit led because I'll lead you and I'll tell you, you move out of season, you want to speak to them today. Today ain't the day, not today, no rev. He says, I'm going to lead you and tell you when to speak. There's some people here today, you need to know that God is not speaking at you, he's speaking to you. But so many won't hear. They won't heed. You get distracted. You get distracted by the least little thing. You get distracted. Oh, well, he hollered over there. Uh, she didn't do that real good. Uh, she looked like she was dressed for Africa. What's up with that? Man, you're missing everything. 
What made pastor put that color come? Man, that I don't like. You know, you miss everything. He been talking, so I see spittle on his sheet, on his sleeve. I don't think there is, but if they, that's you, you watch him. You, mm. <laughs> you know, you, you watch somebody giving a, a presentation and they got a string or something on them, you, ain't, you can't hear nothing else. You're done. Stick a fork in it, I ain't heard nothing. Every time he walk around, his, his pants leg is all, you distracted by stuff that doesn't even matter. Somebody says, stay woke. Yeah, don't get anesthetized. Don't put to, get put to sleep by stuff that doesn't matter. He says, don't consider the circumstances and say, God can't move in this because of this, that, and the other. When God tells you to move, when he tells you to make the phone call, make the phone call. He says, he says, I want you to reap where you haven't sown. How about that? He says, I want you to sow where you won't get to reap. What I love about God, I'm responsible to pray. He's responsible to perform. Don't get it twisted. Oh, if he tells me to pray, I got to do the prayer. If he don't perform, that's on him. If he tells me to go speak and I speak to you and you reject me, you know what that is? That's a sign to me that I'm obedient to God. The rest is between him and you. You don't have to look. It, you know what it does? It makes me to the point that I don't consider the circumstance. I consider the source. <laughs> it, 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 somebody, thank you. It'll give you liberty, won't it? So when you hear the Lord, now what you say, Pastor Campbell, how do you know that you know? You don't always know for sure, and sometimes you hear, but you got to step out by faith. You don't, and don't act like me. You, that makes you immature. It makes you immature if you're too afraid to move. <laughs> Lex said, do it afraid. Somebody said, do it afraid. Yes. There's some things you have to do afraid because you heard the Lord. Because you heard the Lord. It's something that he says to it. He says, the, the fields are white with the harvest. He said, don't consider the time. Consider the source. When I tell you to go, you go. When I tell you to speak, you speak. When I tell you to stand, you stand. And listen, I am speaking all the time. I'm speaking all the time. The problem is not enough of us are listening. He says to her, his disciples, he says, I'm going to do something, and it doesn't make sense to you. In verse number 36, he says, And he that reapeth receives wages and gathereth fruit unto what? What? that wait 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 so 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 when I go and do what he tells me to do put that back up put that back up he says he ain't give me cash hallelujah he gave me a retirement plan an eternal retirement plan he says and he who reaps receives his wages and gathers fruit for See, when I go to talk to people about what God says, it's about their soul. And it's about mine. See, when I get to heaven, man, I'm going to have a crown on my head. I, you, you think I'm going to be cool because I'm going to be leaning to the side because I got all them rubies. Because all of all the souls I done impacted. Y'all y'all be sitting down in the valley with a little bitty house. Don't come on up to the hill. Come on over Come on up a little high. I'm way up in that crib like, y'all, 
God did, and he hooked me up. Because I went down in the valley, and I spoke to Tammy, and she got saved. I went down in the gutter, and I spoke to Elder Ford, and she got saved. I went over where the drunks live, and I spoke to you. Put your name in it. <laughs> He's talking about eternal life. He ain't playing, y'all. Somebody spoke to you. Somebody spoke to you. And God is trying to get a people that will stay awake to his voice so, so you can hear him when he says, now. But you, you sitting there looking at the situation. Not now. She just went off on me. Now I told you now. Not now because, you know, I don't like him. He said now. Why am I going to ask him for forgiveness when he did all of Now, don't you know it's not even about him? It's not about her? This is personal. That's liberating for me because God has asked me to do some things. I, God, you know I know that wasn't fair, but thank God you're not a fair God because I don't want all that I deserve. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want you to be fair, God. I want your grace and your mercy, your enduring favor forever and ever and ever. Thank you, Lord. But sometimes when he asks you to do stuff that isn't fair, we get an attitude, don't we? Mm, uh -uh, that, don't, that don't make no sense. He done got me once. She done got me twice. She done got me three times. And now what you start doing, you forget that he wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth. Now the world's truth becomes your truth. And if you get me once, shame on you. You get me twice. But God said, no, bro. I want you to forgive him seven times 70. What was on his mind when he wrote that? What was he thinking? He couldn't have been thinking about you, Dewan, because you ain't got that much grace. I know I don't. He must have been thinking about Mike. Mike got a lot of grace. <laughs> he must have been thinking about y'all. Y'all got a lot of grace. I don't. He, he must have been. He must have been tripping, thinking, you know, I'm a, I'm God. I can do what I want. It's my eye prerogative. Look at verse number 42, and I'll close. She goes to the people. God will take you to people who hate you, don't like you, but they'll listen to you because you had an encounter. Then they said to the woman, after they had came, watch this, they had came and they listened to Jesus for two days. And then they said to the woman, now we believe, watch this, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this indeed is the anointed one. You got to know the Lord for yourself. I can tell you, and the fact that I've seen him helps me to tell you what I've seen, but you've got to come and spend some time with him and get to know him for yourself. Somebody will give you a testimony about Jesus, but that ain't enough, man of God. You got to get to know him for yourself. And it doesn't matter that you're in this room. Many of us are still gathered, but we're not assembled. You're in the house, but being assembled, he called us an assembly. An assembly means that you have a purpose you have potential and a purpose. And when you get connected to the body that God called you to, then you go forth in power to accomplish what he called you to do. See, that's why when we talk about get connected, everybody say get connected. Man, you don't even know. You don't even know who you are until you get connected to other people. Come here, Alfred. Grab me by the arm, like we the bride of Christ. I'm Jesus. Walk with me, Alpha. 
as we're going along the way, sometimes I got to lean on him. Sometimes he got to lean on me. Sometimes I'll tell him about himself, and other times he'll tell me about myself. I don't even know who I am until I get connected to the body because I can see you, but I can't see me. And what we find is iron sharpens iron. Here a little and there a little. See, Alfred and I are friends enough that he could come over and say, Rob, we need to talk, man. What you did, that was wrong. You can't tell me that because I don't have relationship with you. I have relationship with him. Some of you all have a relationship with the church, but not with the people of God, and you wonder why you feel isolated and alone because you are. And God sent you with purpose. There's things that this man can say to me that no other can say to me. Things that I need to hear. He's not, a, he's not ashamed and not afraid because he loves me and he's listening to the Spirit of God. So when the Spirit of God tells him to come and pray for his pastor, to come and speak a word of encouragement to his sister, to come and stand with me, and even though you don't even know what's going on, but we're connected so he understands something is all about you. You're not the same. You, 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 something is uh, the Spirit of God. Oh, there it is. The Spirit of God told me to tell you. Too many of us are isolated and alone when God called you to be assembled for purpose. Give the Lord a hand praise. Thank you, Alfred. I preach that church attendance it's not optional. <laughs> he says, do not neglect the assembling of yourselves. If there's a neglect, there must have been a responsibility. You say you, you love the church. You love Christ, but you don't love the church. Stop playing. Stop playing. How you going to love Pastor Campbell and don't love my wife? Man, we ain't got no relationship. Stop playing with yourself. Now, I'm telling you for sure, you don't love, you, you don't let me find out. What, I'm going to be hanging out with you and you don't like flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. Are you kidding me? You, you see, you didn't hear it from the Holy Spirit. You heard it from your flesh. So when people come in and sometimes they, they, don't, they don't like something they see, what did the Spirit say? What if it's contrary to what you are? Maybe God wants to do a new thing in your life. Maybe God trying to, he, he, you, you're so steeped in tradition that you made the word of God of null effect. Oh, I can't believe they don't have communion on the first, second, third, and fourth Sunday with all white. I got to find me a church that know how to do church. And the pastor don't preach in a robe. Fill in the blank with your stuff. You know what I mean? You better hear from God, man. Because guess what? It's not about your relationship with me as a priority. It's your relationship with him. He's looking for spirit-filled believers. Stay woke. Come on, give the Lord a hand and praise. Stand to your feet.